All right, let's talk about square root functions. Uh, if you've ever put square root of x in your calculator in y equals and go to the table, you see a whole lot of decimals and a whole lot of the word error. Uh, because if you remember, when we try to take the square root of something that's negative, some negative number, uh, we end up with an imaginary answer. It's not possible to get a real square root value out of that. So those values aren't going to show up on the graph. We can't plot those. There's no way of plotting a point makes it real, and so we can't plot imaginary values. All those decimal values happen because square roots create a lot of irrational numbers, right? We don't get integer solutions. So to make our table, we want to fill the x values with perfect squares. Those are the ones that are real easy to take the square root. We get an integer value. We're comfortable with those. They're easy to plot. So we'll start at 0. Square root of 0 is 0. 1, the square root of 1 is 1. 2 is going to be one of those decimal results. 3, 4 though, square root of 4, that's 2. And it continues on all the way to 9, and that value is 3. So we'll plot just these points. And these are going to be our set of points we're always going to go back to no matter what kind of square root function we're graphing. So I'm at 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3. And when we connect them, we could keep going to the right, the positive x direction. But if we go backwards, we're in negatives, and those are imaginary numbers, so it has to stop right there. So for the first time, the domain of our function is not all real numbers. Our domain on the left, the leftmost point, starts at 0. And as we travel to the right, it continues to infinity. Our range now, the bottom of our range, at 0. And as we move upwards, it's going to continue to infinity. This is the key to everything we're going to do with radicals right here. Transformation rules are the same for square root functions as they are for every other function out there. The number in front, our quote a value, can determine if it's a, got a reflection across x. It'll let us know if it's been vertically stretched or compressed. The value inside with x is our horizontal translation. And the value on the outside is our vertical translation. With radicals, we've got to pay close attention to where this bar ends. Sometimes you'll see this in parentheses, which makes it really easy to remember what's going on, but sometimes you don't. So it's important to pay attention to what's in the radical with x and what's outside, because that's the difference between horizontal and vertical transformations. So let's consider the function g of x equals negative 2 square root of x plus 4 minus 3. So what's going on? Well, first I can see that there's a reflection across x. And then there's a vertical stretch. This plus 4 value tells me we're moving to the left 4 units. And minus 3 at the end means we've moved down 3. So we're going to take that information and we're going to move our parent function starting with the translations. It's the easiest part. We'll do that first. So I'm going to move my origin left 4 down 3 and mark that there. And then we're going to imagine a new x and y axis. And we're going to pretend that that's our new 0, 0. It makes the numbers a lot easier to deal with and we can handle the reflection and the vertical stretch. So since there's a reflection, I know instead of going up and to the right, we're going to go down and to the right. It's just straight reflect across x. That vertical stretch of 2. So instead of going over 1 and up 1, we're going to go 2. 2, 3, 4. Normally we'd be at 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 5, whoops, should be on there, 6, 7, 8, 9, should normally be at 3 times 2, 4, 5, 6. So I can graph my whole function without picking up a calculator. It's a whole lot easier to see the integer values, and we can just go on like that. My new domain and range. 
if I move all the way to the left, it stops out here at negative four. So my minimum domain value, negative four. But again, as we move to the right, it continues on to infinity. The range, the bottom of my function, and it's real easy to say, it starts at negative three and it goes down to infinity, but that's backwards. Remember your sentence has to make sense. It starts down here somewhere at negative infinity and increases until it gets to negative three. Ordered matters, be very careful with that. The last thing we need to look at and think about is how to write a function based on transformations. You're pretty good at this with quadratics. Same principle applies here. I'm going to start m of x equals, I'm going to leave a blank in front. I'm going to set up my radical x minus something plus leave another blank out here. Then we're just going to fill in the numbers. Reflection across x. That means whatever else goes here, this is negative. Vertical compression of one third. Translate to the right five. When I put that five there, go back and double check. Does this, if you saw it without any context, the x minus five inside there, mean move to the right? It does, we don't need to change anything. Down four, the negative direction four. Well, all that's left is to clean up this sign business here. And I know my new function, m of x, is negative one-third square root of x minus five minus four. Again, you can put those parentheses in there if you want to. You don't have to, but make sure this ends right here on the other side of the five and does not include the minus four.